Your name, beautiful name, yes. Okay. I can put the D in it, right? No. <laughs> okay. 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 Uh, Sign next to that box. D, D, D. And then sign, you see where your finger is? Right here? The, the, the top one, yes. Okay. Congratulations. Thank you! <laughs> <laughs> Look, you're, you're, this is your big moment. <laughs> Welcome to Disneyland. The funny guy. <laughs> I cannot no, trespass. No, Go on this ride unless we, it's we, fun we, and it's worthwhile. Uh, <laughs> Adventure jungle ride, whatever ride is. I've been gone for a long time. That's <laughs> one of those rides we are going right now, okay? Okay. Let's go here. So Hello disciples, welcome back to my channel. You are watching Evangelically Millie and you can call me Millie if you are a part of this family. Y'all, welcome, welcome, welcome. God is so good. I literally am just hopping on this video because the Lord wants me to share my testimony. I really prayed and was like, Lord, is this something you want me to share? And he said, yes, because Again, I'm only led by the Holy Spirit. I'm only posting content if the Lord has truly spoken to me. I'm not out here just posting videos just because there is purpose behind these videos. Some of these videos are planned because he's given me a word and then he literally gives me the energy, you guys. Like, say for example, he drops a revelation in my spirit, gives me scriptural references and I'll notate it on my phone and do some quick notes. Even though I may like feel like I want to get this out here right now, this is fire, someone needs to hear it. The Lord literally will not give me the power nor the strength to bring forth this word unless it's his time. And so every single video that you guys see on my channel, it has been prompted by the Lord and then he himself has given me the energy the time and just the strength to get it done. And so I just give him all the glory, honor and praise because I am not doing anything in of myself. And so it it's very liberating to feel and to know like you do not get bothered by other people's opinions. Someone made a comment about, Lord, are we watching about a fast or are we watching about getting her car fixed? And I responded, I said, well, this is something I'm keeping real. I'm sharing this revelation in the moment and it's in real time and it was led by the Holy Spirit. And so you're watching both. And so it's like, whether I was vlogging or this was a channel where I sit down and share my testimonies, I am at liberty to do whatever I want with my channel through the power of the Holy Spirit. So thank God I have been liberated from people pleasing and from the effects of other people's opinions and what they think I should do and how they think I should do it. I am not guided or led by man. I am led by the Holy Spirit. And therefore, I seek to please God and not man. I just needed to say that disclaimer. But anyways, yes, as the title suggests, you guys, I have been blessed on today. Today being the last month of June, God came strong for me. He literally showed up and showed out by blessing me with a brand new 2024 Toyota Corolla. The third car that I've been able to drive off the lot with um, being brand new. And God has just shown me that he is faithful each and every single time. Literally just three days ago on Thursday, while I was at this wonderful resource event for my work, I came out of that resource fair four hours later and I could not find my car. My car was missing. It was nowhere to be found. I literally first thought was someone lifted my car, like it has been stolen. So I ended up calling 911 and reported my car stolen. The lady then asked me, was I on top of my payments? And I said, no. And then she said, okay, let's see here. And she said, it looks like your car has been repossessed. And then she gave me the name and the number for that company. And I was just like, kind of, kind of weirded out, but then also dumbfounded in a way, not because, oh my gosh, they, you know, repossessed my car. I knew obviously the situation I was in and I will explain that before any judgment tries to come and even though judgment state still may come, it doesn't matter because again, look at what God did. Look at God, look at God. He's making a way. <laughs> I don't care, I don't care, I don't care. 
I know it's making this into like one of those shows or whatever. Maury, hi, I don't care. No, Jesus is my daddy, okay? He is the father. <laughs> and so I'm just thankful because um, it, I've been through a journey, a lot more than what I have been sharing. A lot more has happened and transpired, but God has been who he is all along. And um, yeah, it was gone. It was repossessed, but I was more so kind of weirded out because I'm like, I got my car in Vegas. Um, and the last time I contacted my, my lender, I had told them that I want to settle. I want to, you know, start making some chunk payments. And they said, since the car had been charged off, I must make the payment in full. Now, mind you guys, I'm going to back it up and give you guys a little background, a quick run through of how I came into the situation and how I ended up having a charged off car on my credit report because I've never had that before. I've always had good credit, carried good, perfect credit. Um, but this is the third time in my life that I had lost it all. So I had lost it all first um, in December 2016. That was when I shut down the first couple businesses that I have had. At that time, I was married. I did that and chose to let everything go to focus on my marriage to, again, give my all, put everything that I knew um, I may have left, all the energy Unfortunately, there was a demise at that point um, and shortly after, January 2019, when I found the strength to walk away from that unhealthy marriage, um, that was the second time I lost it all. Nine months later, I found myself in Vegas, gained it all. Um, the Lord gave me power and strength to get the wealth um, and more than what I was able to even get with two people, right? The Bible says, pity the man that has no one to lift him up and blessed is he who has someone that they can keep warm with in during the night and then also to lift them up when one shall fall and so you know getting married you you think you have one perspective but again being equally yoked with that person is extremely important and I'm not going to get into that testimony about just the fact that even though I wasn't saved, my intentions was still to do things the right way. I didn't know I was not saved at the time, but God has since told me and shared with me that, again, what the word says, you will know them by their fruit. I did not have fruit that lasts. My marriage did not last because the fruit that I was bearing, unfortunately, was out of um, false doctrine. It was out of religiosity. Um, there was a lot of hypocrisy. There was a lot of Pharisee type thinking and living in my life. And so um, God says that once you become new in Christ, all things have passed away and behold, all things become new. So I do literally in my soul have that um, fresh perspective of knowing that he's giving me another chance, even in the marriage arena. However, the experience of it still, still sticks with me because it was a lesson. It was an experience that can now guide me for my future, if that makes sense. But with all that being said, that was the second time I had lost it all. January 2019 had to walk away from it all. And then even though I had gained it all back and God had blessed me with um, more than what I had acquired in those seven years being a married woman, um, I was now single, but I had made a lot of wrong twist turns and failed miserably. Um, and yet and still, by the time I came back um, here to heal from a surgery in January of 2023, by May, I lost it all again. So, you know, God is just... He, he was pruning me. He needed to prune me. He needed to break me to the point to where I got to a point to I, where I sought him. My heart had to be softened enough for him to reach me and for me to finally surrender and make him Lord over my life in a way that I didn't think was um, possible or didn't think I needed to do. But only the Holy Spirit can reveal these types of mysteries to us and reveal the truth that will set us free and that's what happened so yes as of may 20th 2023 i am a saved woman of god and i have not faltered in any of those majors way so fast forward 
since I lost everything um, for the third time in May 2023, that was when I was still on bed rest. I was still recovering from a surgery that then developed complications. So my time off of work, which was on medical leave, went from just being two weeks to about four or five months. And at that time, I was still employed with the Clark County School District in Las Vegas. And so by the time it was coming to the next school year to start, I had attempted to go back to Vegas where I still had a couple properties and um, I attempted to start that school year but then God literally opened up the door to the full-time job that I have now as a military and family life counselor and I was actually able to move back home um, permanently so I was able to close out my apartment and everything else the Airbnb that I had um, which was sustaining me but again by June I definitely ran out of all of the money and savings I no longer they declined, they declined my, um, and denied my claim, my, um, medical claim and everything. So it was a time of literally just trusting God. So amongst those bills that I could no longer afford or pay because of lack of funds, it was my car payment. And now let me tell you guys this, this car that I had was a 2012 Chevy Sonic. It was a trade in i had traded in my brand new car the second time i had bought a brand new car um in august of 2021 it was a nissan versa that i had bought in and at the same time god had um prepared me and just i felt like it was time to also look into home buying and that's what i did i ended up finding the house that i have now and was ushered into escrow and at the time that the um the escrow was in its final weeks of closing or final week of closing rather my car had popped on the credit report this is my first time purchasing a home I'm not necessarily sure how it worked even when they sent paperwork saying have you made any major purchases in the last 90 days I said yes I marked yes and I told them my car and everything so I'm thinking they had this information on hand and there was no problem at the time my Nissan Versa um payment monthly was about 460 okay 460 dollars and so i had a good credit i was already approved for the mortgage loan but once it popped up on my credit report they the mortgage lender called me and told me that i am now above slightly above my debt to income ratio and that they cannot move forward with the loan unless i either sell the car or trade it in for a lower payment which would be 250 no more than 250 dollars well you guys i almost panicked because i was like i can't lose this house like i want this house and so um in the midst of that i just put all my energy and strength and I was calling around. I went to CarMax. I went back to the dealer and everything. But I don't know if you guys know, but I knew this from, from the first time I started to purchase cars, which is once you drive off the lot with any brand new car, it immediately begins to depreciate in value. So of course, even though this car that I had was only August, September, three months old, it had already depreciated in value. And so a 20,000 something car was now only uh, had a trade in value of like no more than 12,000. I was going to be upside down regardless. And so I ended up um, just a few little twists and turns seeking out different companies. Someone told me about Carvana. And so that's what I did. I looked at Carvana and there was vehicles there that I just kept checking every day, checking every day to see if I can get a car payment at $250 or lower while still trading in my car to them to exchange and get that car. And so I kept looking and looking and there was this one car, electric car, but I just didn't really have peace about it. And my loan was contingent. The, the um, buyer, shall I say, was getting very impatient at that time because it was going on month two of closing. And typically it takes only a month when the process is really smooth. And so it was going on month two and she was just getting antsy and pretty much threatening and saying, I'm going to put the house back on the market. She was upset because of the house that she had initially entered into escrow for, which was contingent upon her selling um, her house, which was to me at the time, um, it had fell through because those sellers had became impatient with the process of her house closing and being sold to me. And so she was upset and frustrated, which was understandable, but I just put it in God's hands. And so she just 
we her and I talked a few times and she just said, you know, I um I chose you and I really want you to have this house, but you know, I want to leave and I want to be able to get a house and make sure that the house that I like, I'm able to close on in the, at the right time and so forth. So, I had that understanding as well. But she ended up just holding in there for me, praise be to God. And so the mortgage lender um, was like, you know, you have to have a car, you know, a new a car, a trade in or this payment by this date or the loan is going to fall through. So I was going through so much stress, you guys, but the Lord made it happen. I found the 2012 Chevy Sonic. It was white. It was cute. Um, and my payment was $249. And I got a loan through Carvana, through their loan servicing company and was able to, um, at the right time, go trade in my car, turn in my car, and get this car in exchange. Yes, I traded a 2021 Nissan Versa for a 2012. And unfortunately, you guys, that car that I traded in began to be a lemon. It was immediately had a lot of issues to it. And um, the way that, and I'm using Carvana not to shame them, but to just be honest, like I thought it was a great service, like the way that they handle their online, um, you know, exchange process and purchasing. I, I think it's smooth. I think it's great. The customer service was great and everything. And I love how they have this feel of you have a big coin when you go there and you put it in like a vending machine and then you crank it and then your car comes down from their you know long little display it's cute it was fun it was exciting i had vlogged that at that time but never got around to posting it because since then that was one of the things i had to lose for jesus right um so my whole channel um first channel was gone with that content but it was really cool and nice but like i said within the the day i left there was issues with the car the windshield had to be replaced the um heater and air conditioner wasn't working there was an issue with the fourth cylinder um there you name it there was a lot of issues with that car unfortunately and so they have you under a warranty for a certain amount of time um based off of how many miles you drive and then based off or the time that you have the vehicle whichever one comes first and they would cover any types of things so I'm moseying along and getting things done for free technically, but then once that warranty and that time and coverage ran out, issues still continue to pursue. And so I eventually, by the time I was at home last year healing from my surgery, my car was just sitting there because it had broken down and I didn't know what the issue was, nor did I have the funds at that point to get things done. So. I didn't really have the best experience with that car, but eventually it did get fixed. But by that time they had already, and not everything got fixed, it just got fixed enough to be drivable, which was in perfect timing because I had gotten my car here, uh, or not my car, my job here, and started to travel a little bit further than, um, than most. And so I had been driving this car since September of last year to and from work and I've it broke down again and then I had to put some more money into it and then since then there was still um the air conditioner didn't work so it was cold in the it, it's what cold in the um winter time and then the heat heater didn't work so it was hot in the winter it was I wasn't able to have heat if that makes sense and so yeah that didn't work there was a link in the coolant and then up to this point when they had taken it on Thursday the check engine light was on which is why I failed the smog test if you guys go and watch that last video about the, this 971 fast I had taken my car to get the smog test so I complete the car registration but it failed the smog test because it had the check engine light on which I didn't know that if you have the check engine light it's associated with any emissions and since the smog test is an emission test you automatically fail so that's what I learned in that video and it was very necessary for me to keep it in there and not edit it out for that person that made that comment but anywho God is so gracious because even though all that happened and the other detail that I want to share is that 
um, since I have been driving a car and because I've never been in this situation and I'm pretty good with paying down my bills or paying off any obligation that I had. By the beginning of this year, I had contacted the lending um, company for my car. And yes, even though it had charged off, I was adamant about paying it and getting being able to kind of set up a um, payment plan whereby I can have it paid off by August within four months. And so when I called them, they said, yeah, you can no longer set up payment arrangements. You can no longer um, you know, set up anything to pay this off in increments. You would have to pay the whole total. You guys, I owed 10500 on that 2000 2012 Chevy Sonic and I'm like what and so I said okay fine so in my mind I put together a budget and I begin to put money away and aside so that by the time I get to I was aiming for 11,000 just a little bit slightly over than the full amount that was still owed on the car and so um and I had paid the car for a year but the last um year it you know it's what the last six months essentially um because 21 22 23 yeah so for the last 18 months it has just been an issue and so I ended up putting money aside um for the last few months and I had the full intentions of being able to pay the car off in August but God but God but I am here at the um, Toyota. I just gave my information. So they're gonna run some numbers for me and see what that looks like for me in terms of getting this car. Um, I prayed on it, came back because I love it. And we'll see what happens. We what goes down. This is where, you know how people say, God knows my heart, God knows my heart. I really, God does know our heart, we know that. But I feel like a lot of the times that it's been used, it's been used as a um, scapegoat to sin. And it has been used as a cover up or an excuse to sin. And so I don't use it for that reason. But in this situation, God truly knew my heart because I do tithe and I do believe tithing opens up the door for God to pour out a blessing upon us, as he says in Malachi, where we will not have room enough to receive it. And so I had um, started to tithe regularly and again my intentions and i had set up a budget to not only pay off that bill but a few of my other debts that had um gone to collections while i was sick i was on bed rest and out sick for nine months out of the year last year and by the grace of god i even fell six months behind on my house payment my mortgage payment so that really was stressful but it was all a surrendering an act of surrendering and just trusting god and seeing how he can pull me out once again one more again okay and that's what he did so when I started working, of course, the priority first was to make sure I kept a roof over my head. So that's where the checks was going. It wasn't until the beginning of this year in February where I was actually able to start putting together a budget to start paying off my other debt bills with my car included. But again, they came and got my car while I was in the resource fair, while I was working. I came out, couldn't find my car, and it was gone. And it had been repossessed. How they found me, I don't know. But it doesn't matter. But it was gone. And so I felt so much peace in the sense of, um, it was like, you know, I knew I was behind. To them, this is business. They don't always take into consideration your situation. I had communicated with them before my car was charged off and was on a payment plan. But again, once you leave, you once you are depleted of funds and you no longer have money to give, you got to let go or or you there's nothing much you can do and in that case because of my condition there literally was not much I can do so I couldn't do much it had it, it was gone it went to um collections and eventually charged off but now um God just spoke to my heart because on Thursday after I had contacted the company to get my belongings and to retrieve my belongings my dad had came out to help me on that Friday and so we went there together a brawl a verbal brawl broke out between the man and my dad because this man was running his business through his home and he didn't tell me that only one person can come so he started yelling at my dad the moment my dad was walking with me of course my dad got defensive he said just let her get her stuff I'm here to just be here and he was like no no get off my property get off it was just hectic you guys and as I was driving there, as my dad was driving me there, I heard the Holy Spirit because I was in rest mode. I often hear his voice more clearly, that still small voice, and receive the greatest visions or um, dreams when I'm in a real restful state. And I was dozing off and I heard the voice of the Lord say, 
the city, I'm not going to say the city, the city I had to travel to, to get my belongings from this repo man. He, but he said, blank is not your God. And I was like, wow. And it was a twofold statement that God said because there was another job offer on the table for me, um, for me to consider as of late. And it was in that same city. But then knowing that my car was repossessed and it was being held and my belongings was being held in that city, God said, blank is not your God. And he has since revealed to me, he said, Charmil, and this is a whole nother video that I'll share later, but he, in short, he said, Charmil, Satan can bless people with things too. Don't forget that he tempted me and attempted to give me what was already mine by telling me to bow down and worship him. And he'll give me all of this, you know, the kingdoms of heaven when he took me upon that mountain after my 40 day fast. He says, so if he so much can try to attempt me, the living God and the prince of the world, what, what makes you think he wouldn't try to tempt you? And he was like, but I want you to know this um, mystery that things that you, certain things that you acquired while you were living in Vegas and in this particular state of sin and deception and essentially unsaved at the time, enemy, the enemy was working behind that and blessing you with certain things that you didn't even know because your heart posture and you were predestined and are predestined to be my elect and to eventually come to know the truth at that time when you didn't know the truth and you were in darkness, Satan was feeding you things and giving you access to certain materialistic things and certain opportunities that was not from me because you were essentially serving that God unknowingly. I was like, what? He was like, yes, and this car is one of those things. This was an incentive, a, a, a symptom, a incentive from Satan to continue to keep you going and to kind of keep you happy. He said so, and he went deeper and started to, you know, bring together pieces and stuff, talking about the industry and all of those things. He said, but he was like, when I told you that you will, it will cost you everything when you thought you were saved and things that you accumulated during that time. And when I spoke that blanket statement that you didn't yet understand and said, I think will cost you everything. It was because you thought you were saved then. But I knew that when you do come into the full knowledge of Christ and the truth that was going to set you free from the bounds of the enemy, that it was going to cost you everything. And as you know, it did cost you everything. You had to lose it all again to know me, to find me. And he was like, and that car needed to go. He says, so mm -hmm. they found it and they took it. And he said, because that wasn't your God. That wasn't the true and living God that blessed you with that vehicle. He said, but watch what I do. And and it's funny because the day that um, it was repossessed, my friend, I was trying to go get a rental. And you guys, I couldn't, God wouldn't even let me get a rental that day on Thursday because it was like everything popped up. People were telling me stuff about getting a rental when I would go. To, I went to three different rental places. Two of the places in the current city that I live didn't have any rentals available. So my friend took me all the way to the city where she lives, the next city over. And when I went to go get rentals, they said, oh, no, you have to have a 640 or higher credit score. And we only take major credit cards. And I'm like, since when? I used to use my debit card all the time. So it was weird that these particular ones was just shutting me down. And then on the way back home, as my friend was taking me back home without a rental, I saw a license plate that said, get approved. And I pointed it out to my friend and we just started belly laughing. I said, see, this is how God speaks to me. This is how he lets me know everything's gonna be okay. And so since my dad had come down and after we got our my things, um, it was already late. Um, Saturday, yesterday, we went to the car dealership. Um, God put on my heart Toyota. I didn't consider any other places, but he put a, put on my heart um, Toyota. And it was also um, confirmation because my godmother and a few other people had told me, if you ever get another car, get Toyota because they're top of the line cars the way that they are made. They are next to Lexus in terms of um, durability. And, he, and she was just like, and they can last for years as long as you take care of it. And so God confirmed that. He said, I want you to go to Toyota. But it's crazy because before I even had my car repossessed, Monday of, um, you know, this past Monday, I kept hearing the Holy Spirit say, the city, 
he kept saying the city. I'm not going to say the city, um, but he, he just kept saying the city. And I was just like, didn't know what it was referring to. But then yesterday after my dad and I went to the first Toyota in the city in which I currently live, um, I saw a car. This was the car that I saw. And <laughs> He's real chill, real mellow. <laughs> and I thought it was pretty cute because I thought I wanted to get a US, uh, um, SUV again. And so I saw this car and it was just so cute to me and I loved how it drove and it was smooth. And I was like, oh, I was so excited. But then again, I heard the still small voice and he said go there so I said okay dad can you take me to um you know which is about 30 minutes away to the next city so I can go to that Toyota so we went and they showed me a beautiful car um afterwards they was trying to sell me on a couple other ones that I just was not budging on okay um but then they showed me another version in a different color not another version but the same version in a different color of a particular car and I was like oh I love this and by that time, I was like, I'm exhausted, though. I'm not going to make any decisions. God's going to have the final say, and I'm going to go home and pray on it. So I was telling them that, and they were respecting it. All of those men, literally, the men that helped me, I was just sharing and glorifying the name of the Lord. And they were responding back to me, and they were believers as well. They were saying, and hallelujah. I was like, okay, God, you wanted to bring me to your people, your sons. And who's going to help me and support me and to make sure that I get into a car. Okay. And so that's what happened, you guys, in a nutshell. I literally went home last night. I slept and knocked out. And then um, my dad and I had breakfast together. We woke up. He took me back to that um, same dealership because I had decided um, after pr much prayer and everything, the Lord spoke to me in the fourth watch hour um, between three and 6 a.m. And he said, I want you to go back and get that car. And so he said that to motivate me. And so sure enough, when I went back, um, and told them I want to get that car. They ran the numbers, they ran my credit, and they said I did not uh, qualify for that car because of the price and because of how much I wanted to put down. I only wanted to put down one or two K. Um, I didn't want to go higher necessarily. Uh, uh, let's get this light back on. I did not want to do higher. Um, and so they were like, you would need to get a car within this range. And um, we do have some certified used cars you can look at. I said, mm, I really don't want used cars. You know, I really don't want that. And they were like, um, and then Tay, who helped me, he was like, well, I do have one car that um, is within this price range and we may be able to work it out for you. So he brought the car up immediately when I saw it. I was like, I love it. And you guys, I didn't even notice, I, the Lord told me to put this on. He told me to put this particular dress on today. Tell me why the car that Tay drove up for me to look at was exactly this col color. Brand new 2024 Corolla. And it was the, it was a beautiful glistening color. It is a beautiful glistening color with only nine miles on it. And so him and I took it for a test drive and it was beautiful. I immediately loved it and they worked the numbers for me and I got my car. Right now, Bobby's trying to, based off of what I'm willing to put down today, he's still working to see if he can get me a lower or a down payment that is feasible and just a lower down payment than what they initially told me. Mm -hmm. So we shall see. No, lower down payment, lower monthly. I mean, a, I'm sorry, a lower <laughs> monthly payment, not a lower down payment, because <laughs> I'm, 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 ma I'm maxed right now. I'm giving them what they, the bank is willing to work with me for down payment, but he's going to try to crunch some numbers to get me a lower monthly payment. Yes. So we shall see. Thank you. Thank you. So these are some clips, you guys, from my day today. And um, just enjoy it, and I'll come back to say a few more words. So these are two of the wonderful men that helped me get my brand new car, you guys. This is Kay, this is Jose, and those are my papers that just fell off my office. <laughs> We're waiting for mine, but I'm so thankful. Awesome. I got it so done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You guys are going to be on YouTube just FYI. Awesome. Be YouTube famous. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get to be on YouTube.
YouTube. <laughs> Can I, do I have your permission? Yes. Okay. Yes, <laughs> I appreciate you guys' help. This is, see, this is exciting. I'm not going to take no for an answer. <laughs> you made sure to get everything that you needed. That okay, I wanted you know? and needed. I didn't exactly. have to settle or compromise. Not at all. Not at all. And he knows me better than you guys. He does. He just makes you laugh. That part. <laughs> Well, it's like, it's like entertainment. Yes, I got the belly laugh, and then I, I got the product. You got my swim, right? <laughs> I can't think about that. He was just so excited about that. He like, was all over the place. <laughs> Let me do the whip. No, 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 no. Are you here to come? He's walking over right now. Okay. <laughs> He's coming. So which one of you guys are gonna do you wanna videotape me as I go to my car? Of course, yeah. I got you. <laughs> you guys are busy. We are. You brought the good luck. Are all these people you know, I tend to carry that now. <laughs> you brought all the good vibes. All the good energy. <laughs> Thank you guys. They're sweet. They already sold me the car and still trying to sell me. <laughs> Come on. Mike. I know. I know. Try to... Hi, Mike. Say hi. Hey, hey, hey. So this is Mike. They all helped me, you guys, yesterday and today. I'm so thankful for all of them. It's popping out here, y'all. I'm not going to disclose my city, but it's popping out here, okay? Come see us. <laughs> Come see them, okay? find us. Just find them. Just find them in the high desert somewhere. Just, just pick. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Okay. And they'll link the account to this car. Oh my gosh. It's so cute. Hey? So it's so I cute. love it. The the color is perfect and everything. All right. <laughs> Let's do this, y'all. Brand new car. God is so good. I gotta give him all the glory, honor, and praise first and foremost. So this is my new whip, y'all. I am definitely gonna take care of it. Got a nice back seat. Ooh. <laughs> He's like, okay. So awesome. Well, I guess the car was too much. Let's see. Excited, look. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm so excited. <gasps> Thank you, Tay. For of course. Me. It was I my pleasure. It. My pleasure, 100%. Just listening to the details goes a long way. He was like, I don't think she. <laughs> he was like, it's okay. Just park. I know you don't like it. Yeah, you don't like this one. <laughs> I so. I like the other one. <laughs> we'll make sure we got you one that you like. Oh, y'all. Let's just say this. God will redeem you. We just gotta trust him. That's all I'm gonna say. Thank you. Woo! Of course. Yes, so you guys, isn't that beautiful? God literally prompted me. So, you know, someone made another comment and I don't know if I'm gonna respond or reference every comment that I see, but I just feel like I'm going to say what the Lord leads me to say. And yes, defend the name of the Lord and defend the faith because someone had wrote on my video about woke Christian Christianity has, um, has become really irritating or something. And I was like, how did you get woke Christianity from me sharing the testimony about me re surrendering my idols? In fact, in the last week in the last what is the 30th so in the last 10 days since surrendering my idols of wanting to become a mom and having children because they were heart desires that God initially gave me but I made them into an idol once I surrendered to them God has been opening so much more doors and giving me so much more he he blessed me I'm getting clients in my private practice and so forth that's not me serving Satan by giving up idols that's me serving the living god because god says i will have no other gods before me 
if God, if I was getting the breakthroughs that I desire, the other breakthroughs that I desire be beyond having children and being a wife, then don't you think God would have been blessing me with certain things um, while I was still serving those those um, heart desires that became my idols? Like they became my masters in the sense to where I was doing everything I can to worship them. That's an idol. That's worshiping a false god. But I get why people say, oh, but it's just a hard desire. Yes, but that means, that tells me that some of us are ignorant. Some some people are ignorant when it comes to the truth and knowing what an idol is and knowing that it is possible to make anything an idol. Satan made this world an idol. He was an angel of God that had fallen short because he made it an idol. God gave him the desires to be beautiful. He gave him the desires to, to speak and to sing. He gave him the desires to um, wanna um, worship in the kingdom of God. But that desire became an idol because no, he no longer wanted to worship the one and true and living God, but he wanted to worship himself and the things of this world. And we see where he ended up. So don't get it twisted. Nobody talked about woke Christianity. I don't even know what that is, to be honest. But don't confuse woke being about just knowing the truth that will set you free. Okay. But anywho, back to what I was saying, I am at the point to where um, I know that I'm in the will of the Lord and that it's him that's blessing me with these fruit now because... Um, I've been reading the word, of course. I've been seeking him in everything that I do and applying Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, which is trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. And that's what he did. He's been doing that. Um, and I have have such a, a huge weight lifted off of me because I was obsessive about those heart desires. I was obsessive about them. And God has since blessed me and he's making room. He's making room, you guys, within me and for me. And like I said, I have more hope that it's actually going to happen now than I did when I had made them an idol. It was like the more I obsessed about it and focused on getting that and making that, serving that and making that my master and letting that rule in my heart rather than Jesus, it seemed the further it was away from me that it seemed much more less attainable, which made me much more desperate. You get what I'm saying? But once I gave it up, God's like, I'm going to accelerate things really quickly now. God speed. Let it be God speed. And that's exactly what's happened. In 10 days, I went from having a car repossessed to literally getting approved for a brand new car. A car that God can only say I I gave to my daughter, not Satan. Satan can't do that anymore. But I want to read this scripture because um, this is important when it comes to just the kingdom of God and letting God make you rich, letting God be the one that gets all the glory. I'm going to always give him all the glory for these things because it says here in Genesis 14, 22, this was when Abram was traveling and he made a treaty with the king of Sodom and the king of Sodom was like, okay, let's make peace. Let's no longer get upset. Let's no longer join our companies into war, into battle, but let's make peace. And so they were seeking to make a treaty beyond, um, between them. And it says this, it says, um, in Genesis 14, cause the king had offered him something. It said, and Genesis 14, 21, it says, the king of Sodom said to Abram, give me the people and keep the goods for yourself. They were making a bargain. But Abraham said, Abram, his name hadn't changed to Abraham yet, but it says, but Abram said to the king of Sodom, with raised hand, I have sworn an oath to the Lord, God most high, creator of heaven and earth, that I will accept nothing belonging to you not even a thread or the strap of a sandal so that you will never be able to say, I made Abram rich. Don't you guys know that Satan becomes much more prideful, much more haughty, much more boastful, much more ravenous when he realizes he can deceive us and give us things that will appease us here on earth, but it causes our heart to be far removed from God. 
Someone had posted in my comments about, well, God did say many people in those days will come to me and say, Lord, Lord, haven't we prophesied in your name? Haven't we cast out many devils in your name? And God will say, depart from me, you wicked generation, for my, I never knew you or your heart is far from me. That is very true. I agree with that because in other words, they were sharing that to um, coincide with the word that I was sharing about giving up my idols. Had I continued keeping that idols in my heart and was unwilling to surrender it to God, I could question once again, am I truly saved? There's a lot that comes. There's a lot of fruit and evidence that comes with being saved. Are we able to give up fornication? Are we able to give up, you know, lying, stealing, cheating? Now, as God's working on our character and molding us once we come into the faith, that's his grace that covers that. But we should ourselves have a desire to get away and to run from those things and to say no to them we should have that desire within of ourselves it shouldn't have to take a catastrophic event for us to decide just like in my life and in my heart i was deciding to pay back my debt or my debts i was looking and working and actively working towards paying off my debt and God knew that and saw it and he literally accelerated the time, had them take, allowed my car to be taken away, but then ushered me into a greater blessing, which was giving me a brand new vehicle that I can have for years um, to come and to allow me to continue to work and make the wealth that he's given me. So I just want to encourage you guys that we should always be looking for ways to let God be glorified in our life. Even when the rough times come and the difficult things happen and the unexpected least happen, and we can just rest and know that Jesus got us provided that we are seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness provided that we are leaning on him trusting in him and putting our hope and faith in him not in riches not in man not in children not in money not in jobs not in careers not in social media not in subscribers not in followers but in Jesus Christ and him alone he will make it happen for us Praise be to God. So that is my testimony that I wanted to share with you. And I just wanted to encourage you guys like this is not about boasting. This isn't about me saying, look at me, look at what God's doing. No, this is about me sharing hope. This is about me sharing the faith of what Jesus says he will do. These are the promises of God. He will, he, he says, he will make it one rich and add no sorrow to it. I felt so heavy knowing that I was trying to pay back this debt for this used car I was the third owner for it that had been giving me troubles that I knew was a lemon but yet because of my faith and the desire and the character that God had built up in me I desperately wanted to pay back my debt but God said I have seen your toil I have seen your hard work I have seen your desire and now I'm gonna give you the desires of your heart truly because you surrendered and plus that gift was from the enemy it was something acquired while I was not yet saved and while I was under the sway of the enemy, period. So God snatched that out of my hands because he was like, I don't want you to have anything or to carry anything that is a burden or that is a heavy yoke. No. So Jesus is great. He is real, you guys. He is Lord. And I just encourage any of you that feel like you need a new home, you need a car, um, you need a job, just know that I'm praying for you guys collectively. I'm praying for my subscribers. I'm praying for those that see it. Um, that that understand it because the Bible also says that many people will be ever seeing but never really perceiving they will be ever hearing but never really understanding certain things and so I'm okay with people kind of coming back and trying to refute what I say and call it woke Christianity and all of this and saying oh it's your personal revelation no because everything that I share is backed up by scripture I do my best and ensure that I do that because that's what the Holy Spirit leads me to do so I mean, people can say what it is, but I was also reading my Bible yesterday that I got so excited because I was reading the part in Matthew 6 where it was talking about persecution and it was saying, blessed is he who experiences persecution and who is persecuted for the gospel's sake. And I was just getting excited because I'm like, is this the beginning of my persecution, Lord? Yippee! because I know that I'm on the right track and that's all that matters is when the Lord can bear witness in your life the spirit can bear witness and you can see the actual fruit that will last 
spring forth in your life, that's all the confirmation you need. Because if God is for you, then who can be against you? The Lord is my helper. I will fear not what can man do to me. That's Hebrews 11, 12, I believe. Um, if it's not, let's just look at it because I'm trying to definitely increase my um, memorization. I do know a lot of, um, I do memorize a lot of scriptures, but I'm definitely working on trying to enhance that. And so I, let's just say, um, what did I just say? Um, the Lord is my helper. Let's just see, because I don't want to leave and people say, oh my gosh, you got it right. No, Hebrews 13, 6. The Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man, what man shall do to me. So we can boldly say, the Lord is my helper. What can man do to me? That's it, you guys. I'm excited, but I am also very exhausted. I have work tomorrow, and so I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you for all your love in my past videos, and I'm looking forward to sharing many more testimonies as God leads. Bye-bye.